mentoring across maritime sector is a theme thanking each one of you for taking our time and being present here today for this webinar i would like to welcome our chief guest for today's session shri amitabh kumar ji irs the director general of shipping so welcome to mrs hk joshi chairman and managing director of the shipping corporation of india audience and the panelists various sector of the shipping so in today webinar we will be covering the major aspects that is the value of mentoring which plays an important role in the achieving the original goals so please stay tuned in as we begin our session the machine ladies and gentlemen good afternoon i will just be going uh, taking you with the few of the do's and don'ts uh number 1 please keep your mic at mute all times number 2 keep your videos on shut mode number 3 if anyone has any question please put it in the chat to everyone we will be in the back end team collating the questions and will be putting it up to the our esteemed guest and panelist please keep the screen on speaker mode so to see the person speaking kindly uh, when you write a question please put a question mark because then there are so many people putting comments it become easier to take out the question from there for the panelist we thank you for your kind support saleha ma'am over to you thank you captain basin honorable chief guest director general of shipping mr amitabh kumar ji esteemed guest of honor chairperson and managing director sci madam hk joshi our special panelists for the day representing the various organizations from the maritime industry and all our members from the audience joining us today a very good afternoon we welcome you to today's webinar hosted by the maritime union of india on the theme of vasudeva kutumbakam which means the whole world is one big family the topic being mentoring across maritime sector the covid pandemic has left the entire world grappling with uncertainty it has led to emotional turbulence amongst people at large for seafarers who are used to stress and a demanding work life this situation has only snowballed into a bigger monster and while the entire shipping and maritime world is struggling to keep things afloat the unforeseen and abrupt disruption to life as we knew it has led to unfathomed complications with no easy solutions at hand at such unprecedented times it becomes the moral responsibility of administrations and employers to provide support to people and to uplift their spirits times of crisis present an opportunity to strengthen trust and understanding between the workforce and organizations the thought process for today's webinar stemmed from a statement made by shri amitabh kumar ji at a recent webinar wherein he very insightfully suggested the coming together of the maritime industry on a common platform to prepare a paper outlining recommendations for mentoring we are all aware of what mentoring is today the value of mentoring is becoming increasingly recognized in almost every industry mostly because of the impact mentoring and coaching can have on the achievement of organizational goals this aspect will become more clearer as we move, move ahead with the session so please stay tuned in we would like to begin the session with madam hk joshi chairperson and managing director the shipping corporation of india madam joshi joined sci on 5th february 2015 as director of finance and was also appointed as cfo on the same date during her term she held multiple additional charges from time to time at the board level of director personal administration director bulk carrier and tankers and cmt from 12 september 2019 consequent to completion of the tenure of the former cmt currently madam holds the additional charge of director finance with effect from 19 december 
when she was appointed chairperson and managing director of the shipping corporation of india by the government of india madam has received many accolades for her amazing work the latest feather in her cap is her that in her tenure the sci has shown amazingly positive results even in these challenging times madam joshi has always been a source of inspiration to women in maritime and continues to be a strong mentor to one and all i request madam to please come forward and leave us with something new to look up to you thank you salaya so much you have asked for something new which becomes challenging but <laughs> before before i start my address uh, uh, respected uh, dg shipping and all the honorable panelists who are here i hope i can give you something new and uh, these pearls of wisdom will be well taken when we are once again uh, together on a virtual platform and it's all due to the pandemic so let's look at it differently today like salaya said i must give you something fresh and something new so let's look at it differently on a normal working day at the peak of the afternoon would we have been able to get together in these numbers i don't think so considering that the challenges one has with respect to the different type of programs that take place sometimes it becomes very challenging and you've got to choose what program you want to attend what you don't want to attend however this challenging times has given us this opportunity and i think there is a silver lining to the cloud and every cloud of course has a silver lining it's a matter of your perception it's always possible that you can look at things differently you can see a half glass full or you can see a half glass which is empty it all depends upon your own outlook however the way you look at things basically determines whether you are an optimist or you are a pessimist when these challenging times come they of course bring in more responsibility for those who are strong enough because it's their responsibility then to help uplift those who are not so strong and i think adversity is basically bring on an opportunity there are plenty of hidden opportunities and it is for the people who are ready to take on challenges that can find these hidden opportunities and in this context at this stage i would like to compliment mui for bringing on all of us together on this platform with a very very apt subject in today's context and as i just learned that uh, dg shipping was uh, the mentor behind uh, having this wonderful uh, concept so i think this concept becomes very relevant in today's context of a pandemic where we are talking of vasudeva kutum that means we all are one big family now when we look at problems facing us and when we look that there are some people who are stronger and who have a responsibility then i think we go back have a little bit of a flash back back to 23rd of march when the lockdown was announced i think initially what happened was we were all really elated we were in a euphoria oh work from home have the freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it and of course no fatigue of commuting etc etc but what happened after a little while passed away that euphoria started fading away and i think this is something which is very very uh, logical if you go back to charles darwin and his theory on actualization you see what happens when you achieve a certain level of satisfaction or satiation then you automatically want to move on to the next level so initially when the pandemic broke out and we were all scared of the safety and security of our own self and our own families and our very near and dear loved ones so we were very elated about the lockdown but slowly when our confidence started building up and we realized that we have the confidence to handle this pandemic and we are safe when that confidence increased 
we wanted to reach out and then we started getting restless and we said now things should be opened up the economy should be opened up we should be allowed to get out of our houses and reach out come back to normal life now does that mean that we don't love our family so much no i don't think so it's a question of extended family and that is where the concept of vasudeva kutum comes up you have your immediate family once you met the needs seen the safety and security initially the challenges were whether we would be able to get food and groceries etc etc once we were comfortable on all these fronts we actualized on that level and we want to now move on to a higher level of actualization when we want to reach out to other people who are there and there comes the need of an extended family i always talk about sci as my family it's not as if i have a small family i've got a substantially large family but i think it's a question of your commitment it's a question of your involvement how passionate you feel about things and to that extent i feel that even though i've been in the maritime fraternity only for 5 years the passion that i feel for this industry the involvement that i have is because i consider it to be an extended family so therein comes the concept of a uh, uh, vasudeva kutum now when there are adversities then that is the time when we actually come to know our true self many time in a normal situation you may not know which side you are inclined with you can always look at a half glass full or you may look at a half glass empty well both of them are realities but the fact remains that both of them are half truths none of them is a complete truth and it depends upon your inclination which side you are inclined towards and your inclination actually sets the context and changes the entire outlook of how you look at things and in these adversities i think this is where the people with a certain positive inclination we all know we call them as optimists and there are others who are not so positive because because of various reasons and that is where i'll now come to this uh, main topic of Uh, today's uh, discussion which is on mentoring there are some of us who are strong enough and it is our duty to ensure duty to ensure that we are always available to those of us those of us who are not so strong and we are always ready to help and once again it's the question your vasudeva kutum and your uh, mentoring is a very intertwined deeply interrelated subject as i would say because only if you are ready to go beyond your immediate family if you have an extended family what is your emotional content what is your capacity to reach out that determines the extent of your extended family however i think one thing which has emerged very clearly in the pandemic is that the me has got inversed or reverse into a v you cannot today consider only about me i the context has become much larger because you are not safe until and unless everybody around you is safe and that is how the me has become v we. we need to look after not only physically psychologically emotionally about everyone around us so that we are all a healthy community and we all grow together now mentoring can be of various kinds depends and i don't say that mentoring has to be only from the seniors to the juniors there is also also a concept of reverse mentoring mentoring i would say i'm always open to learn from any side from any angle and many times i actually learn from my own children and i think the youth has a lot to teach us and we've got to be open minded so it cannot generally be a mentoring from the top down it could be a reverse mentoring as well i think what together we can do with the entire maritime fraternity is we've got a lot of experience and talent which comes naturally with the years of experience which is there why the young have got brilliant ideas so we should be able to marry the experience and the talent with the young ideas which come in 
and that will make a very good teamwork. I would say, if you are good enough for yourself, sorry, I apologize if I hurt anybody, but you are actually good for nothing. You are good only if you can give something of yourself out to the others. And I like to bring my address to an end by a small quote from Henry Todd in his book, uh, say, which is Die Empty. He says, don't go to your grave with your best work inside you. Choose to die empty. I hope we all go that path and share all that we have within us with the community for making this world a better place to live in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Joshi, for those inspiring words. Your sp statement, especially the we, the me turning into a we is very relevant in today's times. Thank you once again. Our chief guest for the day, Director General of Shipping, Sri Amitabh Kumarji is with us. Sri Amitabh Kumarji assumed the charge of Director General of Shipping and additional secretary to the government of India on 10th April, 2019. He is the recipient of the Exceptional Contribution Award for the stellar role played by civil servants in implementation of good governance in the country conferred to him during the Governance Awards of 2014. Prior to being appointed as the DG of Shipping, he was a Principal Commissioner of Income Tax between August 2014 and August 2015 at New, uh, 2000, August 2004 and August 2015 at New Delhi and Varodra. Sri Amitabhji has been a beacon of light to the entire maritime industry. During the current COVID-19 pandemic, he has been at the forefront to assist the entire shipping industry and the seafarers in particular. His support and role at this hour of need is truly commendable. May I now request our chief guest, Sri Amitabh Kumarji, to address the gathering. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, MUI for selecting a wonderful subject, which is very relevant for the present times, but does not restrict itself Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. So uh, it is very relevant for the present time, but it does not restrict itself to COVID-19. Of late, whatever webinars we have had uh, has a very limited scope in terms of uh, discussions and uh, uh, learnings. But this one is fairly wide, both the parts of, uh, of the theme, Vasudev Kutumbakam and uh, mentoring. Uh, Mrs. Joshi has already covered most of the aspects very succinct, succinctly. Uh, there is not much to add. I just wanted to say I'm not very good in Sanskrit and have always been a very reluctant student of Sanskrit even in school. But this is uh, one uh, shlok that uh, always, uh, you know, struck you as, uh, as uh, for its words of wisdom. Uh, that is, I am Nijah Paroveti Ganana Laghu Chetsam Udar Charit Manastu Vasudev Kutumbakam. That is the complete slow. And uh, for those who don't understand, it, it means that uh, this is mine and this is yours. This kind of calculation is done by people with very small heart. For those who have large heart, for, for, for them, Vasudev is the Kutumbakam, the world is yours. COVID-19 has shown us that we just cannot survive on our own. We cannot say that this is mine. 
I am safe and that is enough for me because there is no way that you will be safe if the world is not safe. Any attack by virus tells you that you cannot think only of yourself. And if you think only of yourself, you will neither have yourself nor the world. Of great wisdom, wisdom coming from our ancient texts. And this is how in India we think, we don't really think only of ourselves. Uh, we think of our smaller family, we think of the larger family. Mrs. Joshi kept talking of the larger family. And we also think of the wider world. And if we are unable to do anything for the wider world, we feel very miserable because it is so much ingrained in our day-to-day -day thinking, our day-to-day -day functioning, our, uh, our uh, philosophy for life that uh, you don't feel yourself if you are not performing, uh, if you're not living up to the standards of Vasudev Kutumbakam. In the present situation, we all know that uh, the entire world in general, our country and our industry is hit with a pandemic which has affected our way of life, our way of functioning, our business, and of course, our day-to-day -day comfort. And each and every segment, you talk to any segment, whether it is the ship owner or the seafarer or uh, even uh, an RO, an LSA supplier, a, re a repair uh, agency, each and every one has been impacted adversely because of the crisis. And the impact has been for two reasons, which we have spoken on in on most of the forums. One is the reason of lockdown because of COVID-19. And the other is the requirements that have been brought in because of COVID-19. I have been saying all along that the impact of lockdown will be temporary because you cannot lock yourself in your house for a very long period, no matter what the crisis. Ultimately, the life has to go on. The economic activities have to go on. Our cultural activities have to go on. The higher pursuits of life have to go on. Uh, our learning, our knowledge, our capacity building has to go on. And when we go on with our life, we'll see that it was not life as usual uh, before February uh, 2020. It will be a life which will be slightly different from what we were used to living prior to COVID-19. Mrs. Joshi already mentioned there are some people who are more capable, who are more visionary, who can understand the changes that need to be brought in, who understand the pressures that this new situation has brought in, in our day-to-day -day functioning, in our functioning in the future, in our business plans, in our uh, interactions with all our stakeholders, and adapt to this new situation. There would be others who would be struggling to adapt to the new situation, whether it is in business, in day-to-day -day life, or in uh, the future endeavors. The role of mentoring in the new situation becomes more relevant today than it was a few months back. 
because if we don't tutor or if we don't mentor those who need our help today then we fear the the breakdown in the fabric of the shipping industry itself and the industry is so heavily inter interlinked intertwined uh, with uh, each other's business that failure of one business will adversely impact the other businesses also so to to say very crudely suppose a training institute fails then it will have impact on the the trainees it will have impact on the future supply of seafarers and it will have impact on the manning agency which will have impact on the shipping companies and same is true with say a repair unit or a, a riding squad or any any business that we are talking of and it is time that those who are capable uh, start mentoring and finding solutions for the problems of others uh, these days the dg speech cannot uh, cannot uh, stop without referring to seafarers and rightly so because they are the ones who have faced uh, the maximum brunt of covid-19 situation uh, even when they are working they are working uh, in a very hostile environment if they are not working they are not sure as to when they will get back to work and under what situation biggest problem is in travel because of the various restrictions imposed uh, by different countries by various states within india by various districts uh, within a state and uh, the whole norm of uh, free movement of goods and people have has come to uh, a standstill and a new norm needs to be developed for that we have been struggling with various issues affecting seafarers i'll try to address it one by one because i see a lot of questions being asked on that so far as crew change is concerned and especially bringing back uh, people from uh, people from outside to india we have issues of cruise shipping industry which is not functioning at all and the seafarers working in the cruise sector have no option but to come back the cruise uh, industry has taken it upon in in upon itself to ensure the well welfare and well being of the seafarers working with them but we cannot expect that the entire burden will be borne by them for all times to come it is our responsibility to make sure that uh, these people come back as soon as possible the government has allowed four types of activities and this was allowed even when the other parts of the country were still in lockdown that is repatriation of the crew through sea route on our ports repatriation of seafarers at our anchorages when uh, vande bharat flights came the seafarers were allowed to take vande bharat flights but of course they did not get the priority that we expected the seafarers to get and rightly so because there are some some people who are stuck there who are more needy than us like elder women pregnant women uh, those who have to attend to uh, people in hospital uh, they of obviously need uh, more support uh, than the seafarers but that doesn't mean that the seafarers 
have to wait endlessly to come back. The government has now allowed the seafarers to travel by chartered flights. And uh, thanks to the efforts of all the shipping companies, and I must compliment the extraordinary effort being made by them, we have now started seeing uh, you know, seafarers flight landing into the country. And of course, a lot, lot of seafarers flights taking off uh, the country for joining uh, jobs uh, in different parts of the world. And slowly we are seeing the trickle down effect uh, for opening up uh, these uh, avenues for crew change, both for sign on and sign off. And we have seen more than 10,000 sign-on, sign-offs uh, since 23rd March uh, uh, of Indian seafarers. Maybe if we were completely open, we should have seen more sign-on, sign-offs in this period, uh, which means that some people who were to sign off or who had completed uh, their tenure has to con have to continue to work on board the vessels. Government is very aware of the problems being faced by seafarers and in all discussions, meetings, policy decisions, there is uniformity in view that seafarers need to be given uh, certain privileges that other business travelers do not have. And to that extent, I have been saying in all the forum, we are better off than others. It may not be a perfect situation for us, but our situation is better than most of other business travelers around the world. We are seeing to it that this process is further smoothened up uh, yesterday, uh, some of you would have heard in the NSP meeting, uh, we have approached the government of Delhi to give us a blanket permission for landing of two flights per week in Delhi, so that the delay that is being caused in granting permission for landing of flights uh, uh, for, for seafarers uh, in India is reduced and it, it, it is easier for us to plan the flights coming to India. Uh, we also propose to take up uh, the same proposal with government of Maharashtra. The government of Maharashtra at present has certain problems. Government of Goa has already allowed more than 1500 seafarers to land and has provided uh, adequate quarantine facilities for them. The government of India has from day one provided the facility for testing of seafarers, uh, both uh, on signers and off signers, a, a facility which has not been provided to any other uh, community if uh, they, uh, they are not showing symptoms of COVID-19. So given the limited resources, the government has tried to help the seafaring community as much as possible. So any thought that any seafarer and more so any thought that any family member of a seafarer has that the government is not concerned about their safety and welfare should be you know, laid to rest for all times to come. There is no way that we will let the safety and well-being of a seafarer be compromised in COVID-19 situation. We will do whatever is possible for us in our capacity to help a seafarer if he is in, in times in need of help. But we should also realize that these are difficult circumstances. It is not like earlier when a seafarer would demand that I have to just come back to India to see my family and that request will be granted. Because it is not very easy for a shipping company 
to replace a seafarer with another one. We recently saw a case when a pregnant lady had to be brought back to India from a ship, but her husband could not be spared because the replacement was not available, readily available. Now, these are the compromises that one has to make. But so far as safety and welfare is concerned, we would do whatever is in our capacity to ensure safety. Pleasures will have to be curtailed. The, the shocks that we say needs to be curtailed and that is true for everyone everywhere in the world. And this is the new norm that we need to realize. We don't know for how long it will continue, it will, for how long it will go on, but we will make sure that it is reduced as much as possible given the constraints that we are all working in. The second uh, set of uh, questions uh, are being asked about, uh, about uh, the examinations. Uh, we all know that in the Ministry of Home Affairs orders, the institutes, the educational institutions are likely to start functioning from 1st of July if the states do not put in any further restrictions. As of now, we propose to start our examinations from 1st of July itself. The first uh, set of examination will be for those whose examination had to be postponed midway uh, because of the lockdown. So their examination will start from 1st of July. And then uh, the normal examination schedules will start. Of course, uh, we will have to reduce the capacity of the examination, examination halls and we will have to start discussing with the training institutes if they, they can make more space available at their uh, centers to be used as examination hall for a few months till we uh, come up with a better solution. Both the chief examiners are concerned about uh, the delays in examination and certification but some of these delays are beyond anyone's control. And uh, we will try to make sure that we compensate as uh, much as possible. Uh, the training institutes have been allowed to start virtual classes and all, most of them are actually uh, are already uh, conducting most of the classes uh, through virtual classroom at least the theory part. Now we will have to start uh, thinking uh, of uh, bringing back these students to the training institutes to complete their workshop training also. Of course, the capacity of the training institutes will have to be reduced uh, to say around 33% or 50% depending on the existing availability of the infrastructure. Uh, we will soon work on it and we will, we will ensure that uh, as in when the institutes are allowed to start uh, operating, we will, uh, uh, we will start uh, that, uh, to resume our training activities also. In all, I say in every forum, we are working at 80% of our capacity or 70% of our capacity. We will have to start working at 100 or 110% of our capacity soon, not only to resume our activities, but to also clear the backlogs. Uh, if anyone has any suggestion in this respect, of course, uh, we would be most willing to uh, consider those uh, suggestions uh, and uh, try and find solutions to the problems that uh, we are facing. I also have uh, a message to convey to everyone associated 
in the maritime community, especially when you interact with the outside world. And one should be very clear about the message that you want to convey to the outside world. If the message being conveyed to the outside world is that the Indian maritime community is not ready to tackle the COVID-19 situation, then you are writing your own death knell because there are other countries who are willing to raise their hands up and say that we are willing to replace the Indian maritime community and provide whatever services the Indian maritime community is providing. Of late, I have seen some very irresponsible statements being made by some respectable members of the community. And I feel that such outbursts only impact your own business, your own future, the future of the next generation of, of merchant Navy officers and the futures of the families who are dependent on merchant Navy in one way or the other. So please think twice before you utter a word to the outside world about our preparedness, our situations and our struggles and travails. Inside discussion is always discussed, thrashing out difficulties, thrashing out issues to, to overcome the difficulties is always welcome. But to expose your weaknesses to the outside world is always a bad strategy. No corporate does it, no government does it, no business does it. There is no reason why you should do it for, you should do it. And uh, United, as Vasudev Kutumkam, I think this is one crisis we can easily overcome. We have lost a lot, but this loss is transitory. This loss can be made up, but the future that we all have, the visions that we all have should continue and the effort to achieve that vision should be increased now because we have to cover up for the lost time and we have to maybe reach our destination faster than we had thought earlier. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I think as usual, you were articulate, you were precise and to the point. Uh, I'm not going to uh, take up any more time um, and uh, get on with the formalities and the reason why you're here. You've heard the two most important speakers, the CMD, SCI and our dear DG sub. So moving on, I'm going to request uh, Captain, uh, I'm going to request uh, Thakur sub to start off and kick off the proceedings today. Uh, Thakur sir, please take over. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. As you all know, the world has been completely locked down due to the coronavirus pandemic since last three months. The entire world economy has literally ceased to halt with all its major working either been closed or restricted. If our seafarer would have not kept the show alive, the whole world would have stopped. They have been showing their resilience despite their sign of being extended way beyond their contract. It gives me a great sense of pleasure to say that all the seafarers are the essential workers who, despite all odds, kept going and providing their uninterrupted surplus services to make sure that all goods are driven from one part of the world to another in order to satisfy the needs and requirements. However, this is a difficult not just for the seafarer, 
but also their families. This is the phase out of the ordinary and therefore required extraordinary efforts. Just as a soldier fight a battle, we are in battle with an invisible enemy. And there is a lot of uncertainty about when all this will end. It will take time and much efforts to get the right strategy that works. There are a lot of factors involved and we have to understand that this is a global pandemic of extraordinary proportions. Just like India and its various states, each country has their own protocols and SOPs to follow. It only means a lot of complications and limitations. The Maritime Union of India has been working very hard to ensure the quick and safe return of its seafaring members. For this, MUA has been coordinating with the Director General of Shipping and Ministry of the Shipping to the collective efforts of the maritime industry, stakeholders, and individually as an organization with its capacity. At the MUI, maintaining the way of life. This is how we normally function. However, during this pandemic, we have stepped up our efforts in hand holding our members through this crisis. Many seabeders and family are stuck in different parts of the country with little or no money or food to lend for themselves. Amir has been silently offering help to Russians and other means. Our helpline numbers have been constantly budging with the calls for help and assistance. Through our various chapters, we have been assisting seafarers and families in every way possible, counseling and mentoring our members all the way. Our woman wing has been conducting webinars with families of the seafarers. The idea is to keep channels of information and communication open and also to offer help and assistance. Activities are being conducted online on topics like emotional intelligence, positivity, art and willingness. The idea is to encourage with the families and keep up their moral high. We strongly believe that happy families make a happy severe. And therefore, we are taking at most care to ensure the families of the seabearers are coping with the COVID lockdown in a positive manner and not letting the stress and anxiety get to them or the seafarer. We mentor the families on how to deal with their seafarer in this stressful time. We would like to send this message across the world to the seafarer and their families that you are not alone. We are all in this together. As a, as a Basudeva Kutamgam work as a single family. And therefore, we need to fight this crisis together in the best way. There are many people who are trying to trigger negativity and the negativity in this situation or gaining attention. I want, I want to inform to all seafarers and their families that they must not get carried away by any misleading or negativity message. In the current situation, seafarers are completely safe from COVID-19 on their ships. Some people are using misleading words like standard at sea. The fact is, seafarers are not standard at sea. They are doing their work. In fact, while the entire world is staying at home and people are losing jobs, our seafarers are working and earning their livelihood. Yes, we can understand and acknowledge that there is a lot of stress due to delay of sliding in and signing off. We assure you that we are working day and night to solve this at the earliest. The Director General of Shipping has been very, very productive in finding solutions to the huge problem in hand. We are very proud of him. We are thankful to Shipping Minister Sri Mansukh Bhai Mandiviaji and Dr. Mani Shankar, Chairperson, National Shipping Board and all stakeholders for their efforts. We request all to kindly check the website of OPI and the DG and NUSI website.
from the time to time to get the right information. The fact means that the virus is here today to stay. We all need to work around its existence and adapt the new way of life. Like say, this is a new normal. We understand the people are anxious and stressed. It's okay to feel anxious in this time. In fact, this is a time to think and find solution. It is a time to reach out to each other, offer support and stand strong. The need of our is mentoring and hand holding. It is now time to act as Basudevya Kutumgam, which means one word, one family, a place where we all belong to. Taking this opportunity, we are pleased to inform you that MUI is launching a unique mentoring and wellness coaching program for the severe community. Our women being coordinator, Celia will share the details later. I leave you with the new thoughts, words. क्यों डरे कि जिंदगी में क्या होगा? क्यों डरे कि जिंदगी में क्या होगा? हर वक्त क्यों सोचें कि बुरा होगा? हर वक्त क्यों सोचें कि बुरा होगा? बढ़ते रहें बस मंजिल की ओर, बढ़ते रहें बस मंजिल की ओर। हमें कुछ मिले जाने मिले, हमें कुछ मिले जाने मिले तो जरूरत तो नया होगा। वाह, तो नया होगा। Thank you. क्या बात? वाह Thank you, uh, Thakur sir, uh, for that very uh, vigorous uh, speech. I will now uh, request Captain Rajesh Tandon, Chairman of the International Maritime Employers and Council Limited, IMEC, and the Global Director of V Group to uh, speak to all of us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I would uh, like to thank you, Anil, first of all. I'd like to thank the organizers of this seminar. Uh, a special thanks to Mrs. Joshi for those words that she said. And of course, our inimitable and uncomparable Dr. Director General of Shipping to put things in perspective. For all the seafarers who are on this call, let me tell you, uh, we have been working very closely with the DG with regard to the permissions for the flights for seafarers traveling in and out. And I must say that we thank you for that. Sir, Hathi Nikal Gaya, Dum Reh Gaya Hai, 10% Jo Baki, Us Pe Bhi Thoda Dakka Laga Dijiye, Toh Phir Hum Log Kal Aur Gun Gaayenge Is Baat Ko Leke. And I, but on the whole, we are hopeful that we will get the permission <coughs> to bring back our flight, the return, first return flight for crew changes, genuine crew changes on operating cargo vessels. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, I will uh, come to the subject of the seminar, which is mentoring. Now, mentoring is traditionally defined as developmental assistance offered to a junior employee or somewhere in a more by somebody who is more senior or experienced in the business. Mentoring is generally regarded as a bifunctional process. It provides forms of support or development to the prodigy, whether it is career oriented or it is psychological. Of course, Mrs. Joshi touched upon the reverse mentoring aspect as well, which is very relevant into today's world. But in the context of this particular seminar, where we are talking about mentoring in the maritime sector of ship, uh, traditional ship operation, I think I will limit my comments to that. <clears throat> you know, a ship as unlike any shore establishment where you have one CMD, six directors, each director has his own teams, etc. It's a pyramid kind of a structure. But on the ship, we have a linear hierarchy. By linear hierarchy, I mean there is a captain, one chief officer below him, one second officer below him, one third officer below him. Similarly, on the engineering side, we have a chief engineer, Chief, second engineer, third engineer, fourth engineer, and so on on the going down to the ratings categories as well. What this brings about is the, it makes mentoring a very, very important and relevant aspect in the development of the career uh, of the people who work on board the ships, as well as ensuring that the, the, we maintain a safe and a safe operation. Now, to understand this, we have to, for, particularly in the context of uh, ship operation, we have to understand the difference between knowledge and competence. Knowledge 
can be acquired by the books but competent being competent at or the competence is actually being able to transfer that knowledge into actual performance on board the ships for those of you who may be familiar with the miller's triangle which is generally adopted in the uh, medical sector there are four tiers and i'll take three tiers out of that one is the first lower lowermost rung on the pyramid is how does the person know the thing now how does he learn the thing he reads it in the books he he studies the subject he attends courses and uh, lectures and he gets to know the subject how does he show the thing that he knows it it is done by the examinations which are carried out by the regulator and that gives him a license to operate the thing by passing the exam and orals and in a simulated environment but when the person goes on board he has he has to actually do the job and that is where where the difference between knowledge and competence is really highlighted it's one thing to know the job the other thing is to be able to do do it and have the confidence to be able to do it that is where ladies and gentlemen that ma uh, mentoring in our sector gains a great importance so one minute i know i have only three or four minutes here so i will just could conclude by you have only one minute captain not three minutes no i i was talking about the total time anyway thank you one minute right so which brings me back to the key aspects which we should be deliberating upon is we need to be able to bridge the gap between having the knowledge and being competent at doing your job on board the ship that is where i would like to draw attention of the people who may have some of you may be familiar with the mentoring at sea the 10 minute challenge it's a book given uh, issued by the nautical institute read that because you are mentoring your subordinates and juniors all the time the juniors and subordinates are learning from you all the time so please do it follow the mentoring processes informally in your day to day life this is the way to ensure the best practice seafaring practices for the future and make sure that the ships operate in a safe and compliant manner thank you thank you uh, captain tandon and uh, the rest of the speakers also who are going to follow please do not mind my interfering but you know i have a job to do uh, i'm next going to invite uh, mr vk jain chairman of the uh, institute of marine engineers uh, mr jain please start Mr. Jain, just just unmuted myself. Thank you. Uh, respected uh, DG Shipping, Mr. Amitabh Kumar, Chief Guest for the occasion, Mrs. H K Joshi, Mr. Amar Singh Thakur. Uh, thank you so much for inviting, and uh, Mr. Devli, Captain Tandon, esteemed panelists, ladies and gentlemen. I'm indeed humbled to be chosen as a panelist, and it is indeed a great honor to be here in front of you talking about mentoring across. the maritime sector if i can be allowed i would just like to share a slide in front slide uh, visible i would like to share this yeah okay uh can everybody see the slide is it good yeah yes okay uh there is a definition of mentorship which is uh, placed on the slide a mentor shares with a mentee information about his career path as well as provides him guidance motivation emotional support and role modeling it also helps in exploring career options setting goals and developing contacts for the next 3 or 4 minutes i would be talking about mentorship rather than uh, vasudevya kutumbakam which has been appropriately addressed by my preceding uh, the panelist who has spoken uh, so in order to achieve this mentorship the mentor has to be a consultant he has to be a counselor he has to be a cheerleader all in one often the best mentors are the greatest leaders because they inspire others to dream mentors and people to see the future and they encourage their juniors to rise by sharing their experiences and showing them where to look as the meaning or the definition implies it is not restricted only to students 
it can be applicable throughout one's life. Sri Krishna mentored Arjun and guided him to stay on the right path during the battle of Mahabharat. I have tried to put on the slide uh, three places where we feel that mentoring is necessary. Number one, in schools. Number two, in college. Number three, in your profession. I'll just talk briefly on all these three. In schools, when children need to choose their career, definitely they need mentoring. Each individual student has strengths and weaknesses. A good mentor should be able to guide the student into a profession where he or she can use his strengths. The NMDC organizing committee in February this year under Mr. SPS Jaggi, director in SCI, had arranged for a drawing and painting competition in 16 schools across Mumbai. Video clips were to be played at the prize distribution ceremony. The video clips contained information about the maritime sector and uh, we were supposed to go there, one master, one chief engineer, and appraise the students, help them, mentor them, guide them about the maritime profession. Unfortunately, COVID has put a break on all of this, despite the competitions having been held, we have still not been able to go ahead with this plan. But that is what mentorship is about at the school level. Day before yesterday, I received a call from one of the mothers in Thane, and she said that her daughter had studied in military school. She was a national level swimmer, and she wanted to join the Merchant Navy. I tried to answer all her questions and then realized I'm a little in inadequate, or perhaps there could be somebody better to answer it. So I rang up Suniti Bala uh, of the IWSF. I think we have uh, Sharvani Mishra of the IWSF, also uh, one of the panelists who will be speaking later. And I requested uh, Suniti to please contact her. I put them into touch so that uh, she would get a better idea. But it goes without hand, uh, it goes without saying rather that we need all of us here on this uh, panels, uh, whether it is uh, CMMI, whether it is uh, IMEI, whether it is FOSMA, MASA, MUI, NUSI, everybody can play their part in mentoring right across the maritime sector. I'm sure each one has its own role to play. Uh, the second one I was talking about was in uh, mentoring in marine colleges. So Jain, uh, one minute. Yes, sir. At the IMEI, realizing the importance of mentorship, we have over the years built up a mentorship program where we have en enrolled mentors and mentees from across the country and tried to connect them. Goa has been at the forefront where a large number of members have taken on four or five students from the local college there and uh, IMS uh, where 160 students are there. And each, there is a structured mentorship program where each mentor meets his mentee for once in every three months, etc and uh, uh, they make a formal report at the end of the year. Similarly, Kochi is also carrying out various mentorship programs. IMU Mumbai has been approached by the, the Mumbai campus, has been approached by Mumbai branch, uh, and Admiral Saran Lal, who is the director there, has uh, facilitated a number of meetings with the students, and we are in the process of mentoring these students there. Uh, we have conducted a soft skills training program after identifying their needs. And uh, we, we have a structured mentorship program in progress over there. I come to the last point now uh, that is uh, on the slide, which is about at various stages during the career, mentorship is required. Uh, sure enough, everybody knows when one is at sea, one has a family, you have kids, you have people who uh, there's a need to come ashore. Uh, at that time, mentorship is definitely required. Uh, when you are ahead in your career, you want to set up maybe a business or you're looking to change companies. For all these places, uh, things, mentorship is required. Uh, let us all come together uh, under this great initiative and try and collectively provide for the seafaring community, for the maritime sector, mentoring uh, by all of us. I leave you with a quote from Oprah Winfrey, a mentor is someone who allows you to see hope in yourself. Everybody has hope in him, but a mentor is someone who allows you to see that hope in yourself. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Mr. Jain. Uh, Captain Birendra Kumar, uh, your, our turn to listen to you, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Special thanks to Mrs. Joshi and uh, Mr. Amitav Ji for what is happening and what are they planning to do it. Detailed explanation, I'm sure this should go in uh, print media also so that everybody knows what is happening with the exams and what is happening with their show uh, return back to the home. It reminds me, whenever you call mentoring, what exactly is the mentoring? You teach the people, you ask them to develop their skill. I give you one example. When we were eight or nine year old, we went to a school. We did not know anything. What is the future for us? But it was a very good program. Our seniors, one year seniors, they were deputed as a mentor for each one of them. So 60 of the boys, we were selected and went to school. 60 seniors were allotted for us to do the mentoring. In fact, similar thing happened in the Shipping Corporation of India also, and I was shocked and surprised when I was on the state of Rajasthan. When I joined as a junior cadet, I had a senior to mentor. Mentor means just not mentoring and ordering and uh, telling the things. It's really working with you, teaching you everything, developing the skill, even the communication, how exactly you should do it. And after three or four months, because the total stay on the ship is about seven or eight months. So after three, four months, we became a senior and it was our duty to do the mentoring. And we did it. Now, what has happened? Why suddenly this world has become a ment so important? And we feel that our seafarers have lost somewhere. It is right. Nobody likes to create a leader. When you are doing a mentoring, what are you doing? It You are creating a, a, your own competitor who is going to be leader. And one day he will take up your job, you will be a jobless. In today's world, it is absolutely right. Nobody likes to create a leader, but they like to create a follower. Follower will never take this place of the leader. And leaders are not there, so you become the leader forever. It's a little irony, but uh, that's what is, is there. What mentor provides? Advice, guidance, information on the corporate culture, help in the right directions to develop his career, coaching in the specific skill. In fact, Real mentors are the father figure, truly father figure. Mentee has to come so close that the mentor gives out everything, whatever he has, including the bad habits. So mentor and mentee relation is completely different, completely different. And uh, guru or shishya, relationship, what used to be there, that's what exactly matters. Nowadays, what is happening is that, how do you decide? One is that the mentor is thrust upon you, thrust upon on the mentee, and uh, you have no choice. Whoever has come, good, bad, you learn from there. Other way is that a Columbia, you decide who is your role model and you try to follow his uh, way of working skill. So he becomes a parental figure. So he is he's just not a mentor. He becomes a parental figure. He gives you all the time. He calls you. But the most important part in this, I find One it... Minute. Yes, I will take. Most important part in this, I feel, is that 
mentee must be willing to take the mentor. If the mentee does not want, then it's all useless exercise and we are doing it. And this is what is happening in the modern culture because they are living in the isolated room. They have nobody to talk on the ship. The only work culture is there. So nobody is ready to help and support the junior most people. I urge complete maritime industry everywhere, everyone, whoever is ashore or on the ship, please give some time. Otherwise the next generation will not leave you. The way you got your knowledge and skill from the mentor, it is your prime duty and responsibility to hand over the same skill level to the mentee. Thank you very much. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Captain Ja. I must compliment you bang on within five minutes. Also, I must take one more minute here. There are a lot of comments coming in from people. Uh, please hold on. Uh, there are some hands being raised. All of these people will be happy to answer your questions, but we need to first go through the cycle of people speaking. Uh, now, I want to introduce somebody very special. Uh, the next speaker before you is a young girl who, uh, along with a few of her other colleagues, has uh, found it important to set up a forum for women, women at sea. That's the women who go out and run our ships. And I'm very proud to uh, introduce Sharmani Mishra, who is the co-founder of the IWSF. Uh, Sharmani, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, sir, for the very nice introduction. Am I audible uh, to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. And and to help you out, sir, I have also set a timer in my mobile phone here. I don't know if it's visible. <laughs> Others will follow suit. Yeah. Others will follow suit. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my, uh, uh, if uh, you've already introduced International Women's Seafarers Foundation, I'm only add, going to add two, three lines to that. Uh, we are an organization, uh, three years old, uh, but mentoring is something we started uh, long ago, ever since I came to, uh, I joined sailing, that was in year 2002, and uh, one of our founders, Captain Radhika Menon, she started sailing in the year 1991, she was the first lady officer to join on board through Shipping Corporation of India, I must uh, thank uh, the SCI for that, taking the leadership in it. And uh, the one mentoring, I think, it has already been very well defined by all my predecessors here in this forum. Uh, the one thing I would like to highlight, and it is very close to uh, the women seafarers' hearts, is uh, the social mentoring. Uh, given the circumstances of Indian uh, cultural system, uh, having a woman on board is uh, definitely a very difficult uh, and a challenging atmosphere for not just for the lady, it's also for the men who are dealing with her on a daily basis. Uh, that's because uh, shipping is a um, hazardous, uh, it's, it's considered as one of the 10 most hazardous professions, keeping the etiquettes, keeping the morals of the profession on board in a secluded atmosphere is an extremely challenging thing for everyone uh, who are present. And uh, we are talking about those seafarers, you know, a general career of seafaring uh, ranges anything between the age of, uh, what, 18 to 35, generally. Uh, and that, that's about uh, the time usually most of the seafarers would sail. And uh, you are in the prime of your age and social mentoring therefore becomes uh, an extremely important factor. Uh, International Women Seafarers Foundation and our members have always actively taken into social mentoring and have always seen that uh, uh, prevention is better than cure. Uh, like uh, DG sir rightly pointed out, um, it's important uh, to resolve the issues at home than go, uh, go then, then blow the trumpet out and uh, speak of it publicly. Social mentoring for not just women, we do that often, even for men, we request this panel to take they take this as our recommendation that it should be formalized in all the companies. Uh, every rank, including from that of captain to the junior most, and sometimes even uh, the crew, they require social mentoring on board uh, for, uh, for making sure that uh, the gender discrimination or their social backgrounds 
do not affect their profession at any point of time. Uh, we not only recommend it for the shipping companies, we strongly recommend it right from the point where a seafarer, a, a person joins uh, shipping, that is uh, at the stage of uh, uh, at the stage of induction within uh, institutions. Uh, and and what's more important here is you know mentoring is not social mentoring is not necessary just for uh, just for the uh, for the students. It is actually equally important for the managers who are managing them for the for the trainers, for the faculty who are teaching them. Vijin, uh, Virendra uh, Jain sir just now mentioned about it. It needs to be a 360 degree mentoring at all times. Uh, it has to be imbibed in the culture because it's not already present in the Indian systems. Uh, so it's our strong recommendation, sir, that uh, we take in and we have seen social mentoring really benefits. It has benefited numerous number of women seafarers we have mentored them before situations, before social situations happen on board. These can be very well addressed. If if uh, the office can take the initiative, if the faculty, if the people in the channel, in the supply chain can take the initiative to remain in touch, the right guidance can be provided at the right time and issues can be resolved much ahead of time. Uh, I would rest my case there, sir. Thank you very much. Uh Thank you, uh, Sharmini. Um, I'm a, I'm particularly fond of, for, about these, you know, this group of women who are really brave girls and who've come out and made a mark for themselves and are now trying to share that. Uh, I have to now the pleasure of, uh, you know, calling what we call in Mumbai, uh, Purana Khiladi, uh, our dear old, uh, not old, I would, I mean, <laughs> as in he's been here for too long, uh, Mr. Abdul Ghani Serang. Uh, the general secretary and the treasurer of the NUSI, somebody who has been part of this whole community. And uh, Abdul Ghani ji, Thank please. You. Say. I, 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 as you are aware that along with the Maritime Union of India, the National Seafarer of India, we represent the seafarer. Now, this forum that we discuss today, I would like to break it in two parts. One is, because there is a lot of question I can see from the chats that there is a lot of question, frustration about seafarers who are out of India awaiting departure. Let me touch on that and come straight to the point. In two parts, there are thousands of our seafarers who are awaiting repatriation. There are equal number who want to join the ship. So in and both of them are frustrated. Now I would like to very clearly mention for the and you should all be aware, which you are aware, but I want to reiterate and reinstate. Uh, mention it, that each and every of those seafarers who want to come back, they are waiting repatriation, who want to come back, their companies, their companies want them to come back. It is not that the companies don't want them to come back. They are doing all that is that they are disposed to want them to come back. But because of the city, because as NUSI and MUI, we are dealing with the companies, we are dealing with the maritime administration, we are dealing with the Ministry of Shipping, right up to the Prime Minister's office. We are in front contact with them, they are liaising with them, along with the ship owner. So when we say, please, we would advise you take it, take our order. The seafarers want to come back, the companies want to bring them back, but because of government policies, not just in India, throughout the world, there are limitations, that is the, that is the reason the handicap is there. But the, uh, the coming of the, the in, in India, it has already started, the uh, within Indian ports and the government, uh, our government, has also opened up the uh, the flights. It is it is not to the level as we expected it to be, but it is started and very hopefully we should get all our seafarers back. I would urge the family members, please don't put extra pressure on the seafarers who are on board. They are already under pressure. And if you all keep on telling them, you know, your own issues, they will be under more pressure. We want them to come back. We have taken it up locally, nationally, and internationally also. So please bear with us, have patience, because in another way, when the things come around, we will be very happy. Let me repeat, we will be very, very happy if Indians are able to retain those existing jobs. At the moment, whatever jobs we are having, if we are only able to retain them, we'll be lucky. We are losing our shit because of the sign-on, sign-off to the Vietnamese, to the Sri Lankans, to the Ukrainians and Cambodians. They are coming in left, right, and center, and the cruise ship also. So we'll be very happy 
our seafarers doing a very great job definitely they are giving it the it is their passion which is holding them on they are definitely doing a very very great job for themselves their family members and our country i would urge just bear with us there are saturation point we are aware but bear with us we, as the dg mentioned don't paint the town red with your negativities nationally bbc bbc got in touch with me and they wanted to put some negative uh, words but because i was not negative about our process they did not take my part but that is good luck for them i don't care but this is the fact let us be positive things are definitely going to improve so having said that since i still have 2 minutes in my hand i have 2 minutes kitna uh, time एक मिनट मैं यस यस वन एंड हाफ मिनट यस प्लीज गो वन एंड हाफ मिनट वन एंड हाफ मिनट में मैं एक एक दो लाइन मैंने बनाया था वो मैं जस्ट टू ब्रेक द मोनोटोनी ऑफ आवर सब्जेक्ट द सेशन कि कोरोना आया है थोड़े दिन रहेगा मगर जाएगा जरूर कोरोना आया है थोड़े दिन रहेगा मगर जाएगा जरूर टेंशन न लेना इसकी वापसी तय है इसे हम भेजेंगे बहुत दूर बहुत दूर कोई भी चुनौती से नाविक नहीं घबराते हैं कोई भी चुनौती से नाविक नहीं घबराते हैं हम तो वो है जो तेज तूफानों के बीच से निकल आते हैं हमें लॉकडाउन में आता है बड़ा काम सेफ्टी का पालन करना है और करवाना है सुबह या शाम दुनिया की जमीन में लॉकडाउन है मगर पानी में नाविकों का काम जारी है दुनिया की जमीन में लॉकडाउन है मगर पानी में नाविकों का काम जारी है दुनिया हो गई है ठप मगर हमारा नाविक कोरोना पर भारी है हमारा नाविक कोरोना पर भारी है हमारी फैमिली का सपोर्ट उत्तम है जिनके जिनकी हमें याद आती है काम तो करते हैं मगर उनकी भी याद सताती है सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग हाथ की सफाई कोरोना से बचने का इलाज है घर में रहना बिना जरूरत नहीं निकलना यही इसका राज है मगर घर में कितने दिन रहेंगे मगर घर में कितने दिन रहेंगे वापस जहाज पर भी तो जाना है भूखे पेट क्रांति नहीं होती हमारा घर भी तो चलाना है हमारा घर भी तो चलाना है अभी निसर का साइक्लोन आया था वो मुंबई को किस करके निकल गया मगर फिर भी हमारा सीफेर का धाड़स ये एकदम रेडी पोजीशन में है जहाज पर जाने के लिए फिर एक बार तूफान और आंधी को से आंख मिलाने के लिए अपना और अपने परिवार का ध्यान रखना है बस इतना हमें करना है कोरोना से नहीं डरना है कोरोना से नहीं डरना थैंक यू आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू बी हैव सम आप लोग ने इतना धाड़स दिखाया है प्लीज वंस अगेन कीप इट अप कीप द धाड़स ऑफ योर सेल्फ एंड योर फैमिली मेंबर्स एंड द सी फेयर ऑन बोर्ड ऑल रैंक ऑफ सी फेयर टाइम्स दिस टाइम्स श्योरली गोइंग टू पास बाय एंड वील बी कम आउट थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू अब्दुल भाई I will now invite Dr. Sanjay Bhavnani, the recently elected uh, chairman of the uh, Foreign Ship Owners Representative and Ship Managers Association, known as FOSMA. Uh, Bhavnani ji, the floor is yours. Well, uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, please do. Uh, please go ahead. First, well, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, sure. first of all i'd like to thank you for inviting me to this webinar and giving me an opportunity to express uh, my views on behalf of fosma my thanks special thanks to the maritime union of india for doing so at the onset also i would like to thank mr amitab kumar ji for his very passionate leadership which has been shown towards the entire industry and being most proactive in ensuring that the indian administration continues to remain at the forefront especially during the current covid-19 pandemic i think with the kind of support which we have received from the administration has been uh, uh, is uh, has been extremely fabulous and the way the various proactive steps have been taken uh, compared to what has been done by the other administrations i think it is definitely uh, deserves a lot of praise and our thanks to them also our thanks to mr joshi for highlighting the importance of mentoring at the beginning of this particular webinar uh, in our opinion mentoring emphasizes collaboration it is and this also ingrains the idea of reverse mentoring the benefit of collaboration lies both ways for both the mentor as well as the mentee we need to realize 
and utilize this opportunity to ensure that we achieve and continue to enhance the level of collaboration within the industry. We should be able to come together collectively, which we have already so far, and we need to continually keep on enhancing it, enhancing it so that we are able to deal with this situation jointly in the best possible manner to be able to get the required results which we seek out to achieve. In fact, probably that's going to be the only way in which we will be able to successfully deal with and fight this particular battle, which continues to be ongoing. These are indeed very challenging times. And because of the fact that the, these times are also completely unprecedented, uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the Indian seafarers for this excellent work which they are doing on board and keeping the ships going and discharging all their duties in the most professional manner. We know, we understand, we recognize, and we completely uh, are uh, sensitive to the fact that they are overdue for the relief and greatly look forward to be back with their families. We are, we are grateful to them for understanding the situation. And on our part, we would like to assure them that we are doing all possible to ensure that they are able to come back at the soonest possible. At the same time, our objective is also to place the various seafarers who are waiting to be able to join back, to go and relieve these people who are owed you for relief in order to make the entire cycle work. As you all know, the crew changes in India are already in progress since the last several weeks. And a lot of seafarers have already signed off from the vessels which have called Indian ports. And that has been done in a fairly smooth manner. Crew changes at foreign ports continue to be a challenge. And while as seafarers traveling out of India now has been successfully achieved over the last uh, few weeks now, uh, thanks to the active involvement of the various stakeholders being led by the DG Shipping and his entire team, the efforts uh, the efforts now are on to get the seafarers back from the ports into India from the various non-cruise vessels. Our objective right now is to get the go, let allow the people to go out and get the people to be relieved to be able to come back of uh, come back into India in the smoothest possible way. That is going to help us to be able to establish that the entire cycle of crew changes are going to be completed. That continues to remain at the highest level of our priority. And we would like to assure them that we are doing our very best possible to make this happen at the first, first available opportunity. At the same time, uh, <clears throat> about mentoring, I think mentoring is all about people. It's all about caring. It's all about relationships. It's all about exhibiting the required sensitivity. Something which we all need to, which we are all aware of, but we just need to probably give it that much of a thought more. And after all, uh, uh, whatever, minute. yes, ev everything, whatever we know, we have learned from someone else. So mentoring, whatever knowledge we have today doesn't really belong to us. It's our responsibility to pass it on to the others. It's a responsibility to pass it on to the next generation. And then, of course, we, that is the only way by which the next generation will be able to enhance on it. And then the benefit would be uh, passed on to the entire fraternity. With that, once again, I would like to thank all the seafarers. I would like to thank all the stakeholders. I would like to thank uh, uh, thank the uh, thank the Director General of Shipping, his entire team, and I'm sure in the times to come, the entire process of crew change is going to become more smooth and very. Uh, and before long, we will be able to look back and say that how successful we were in dealing with these times more successfully. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bhavanani. Uh, I would now uh, request Ms. Uh, Pankuri Podar, uh, who is the um, mentor at Maritime CEO, to uh, kindly speak. Hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, my fellow panelists and the audience. Thank you so much for considering me worthy enough to speak alongside uh, such esteemed uh, industry professionals. I am speaking today as a mentor on behalf of Maritime CEO. Maritime CEO is a mentorship organization that has been started by 
Sanjam Sahi Gupta of Sitara Shipping and Vista India. But uh, it, it started at a very apt time. It brings together a mentorship platform, which gives a structure to the maritime industry in India, to the mentoring maritime, to mentoring the maritime professionals and the industry in India, which does not really exist very strongly, more so in the commercial sector. COVID-19 has not only, as Mrs. Joshi very rightly said, it's brought upon the importance of positivity in the current times, but at the same time, it has also brought upon a lot of opportunities that exist in the maritime space. For example, in the digital space, the tech space, the chartering space, the broking space, and there is a lot of scope of learning and starting new ventures for which there is a lot of scope of providing guidance, leadership, which is exactly what this platform and so many other organizations that exist in the industry can provide. So I speak as a mentor and I'm very young, but at the same time, I would like to say that I am myself a mentee and the mentor-mentee relationship is something which goes hand in hand and is a lifelong process because personal growth and development doesn't ever stop. It is something which continues throughout your life and there's no end to it. And it extends beyond culture, age, profession, and any other so-called barrier that mankind has created for themselves. I would like to put forth a small anecdote in my life, which, um, which gave me a new insight upon how mentorship can help. So I was in London uh, in 2018, doing my master's in energy. When I, I was attending a lecture at the Baltic Exchange, when I came across a gentleman who was a very senior ship broker and he was doing a, currently a PhD candidate. On, upon talking with him, he suggested that I should apply for a fellowship at the Institute of Chartered Ship Brokers based on my experience and qualifications. Though that is something which is very rare for a person of my, at my age, I thought it was, I, I took the leap of faith and went for it. No doubt I got a lot of um, discouragement saying that I'm probably too young to apply for uh, such a position. But today, not, uh, not only am I a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Ship Brokers, I am also on the committee of the Institute of Chartered Ship Brokers London branch. And I am very actively engaging with the current student community within the maritime sector um, and, their, and helping them shape up their path of future within the shipping industry. So my point being of the entire anecdote is that there will always be people with, who will have different opinions, but we should not let that impact what we believe in and we should take everything and see the positive and the best in everything and keep moving and eventually we will get there and we should together support everyone who's trying to do something One minute. we should support everyone who's trying to do something out of the norm the covid 19 time has highlighted the importance of positivity and how we should all collectively as a community support each other, encourage each other, uh, other, and more than ever try to provide opportunities for the seafarers who want to shift or come back ashore and get jobs on shore. Even though they do not have the commercial experience, we should come up with programs that help them gain that and make opportunities available to them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, it's now my pleasure to invite Captain Gajanan Karanjikar, who is the president of the All India Marine Pilots Association, to share his thoughts with us. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I thank you, MUI, first to have this kind of unique seminar during these difficult times of COVID. Being from Pilot Association, I'm spared to speak on uh, seafarers and their issues. There, people have only spoken about it, 
and everybody is 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 in line with the what actions been are being taken by the government of india being from pilot association of course the mentoring is a very big topic in india and it's a very vast topic also also for the pilots also for the entire maritime fraternity i have heard a lot of people speaking and at the moment i am in dilemma because half the panelists is uh, my mentors and other half is watching on youtube everywhere else so how much i can contribute to this but yes after hearing a lot of speakers speaking on mentoring i have a very valuable thought to share with you i hope you like it mentoring of course is a process but it is a process of what it is not a process of sharing knowledge it is not a process of sharing information neither it is a process of sharing a skill set it is a process of building character and more than anybody else today who requires this building of a character is maritime community the fragmentation self centeredness of maritime community has taken the community nowhere we are fighting over issues today we have seen last 3 4 months we are fighting over seafarer sign offs and things like that with the government and everybody government is with us of course they are helping us but we haven't come together as a community everybody is trying to work on their silos and this itself speaks a volume about character i'm not talking negative here i'm trying to give insight to a very august gathering group which is required the movement because if you don't do it now then demographic advantage demographic you know the dividend advantage we will not have in next 10 years we will lose this years in 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 looking at ourselves and not a lot looking at building a character of a country so we have it in our hands brain to build the character of a country to real mentor our juniors real mentor our society our community and take them ahead and very rightly so the vasudeva kutumbakam itself is a mentoring phrase you see how mentoring takes place in, in the family in the family there is nowhere else the character building can takes place than family i take my surname karanjikar forward with the character of my father my grandfather and forefathers so we need to do that when you have a much any officer crew rating standing in the crowd of million people we should stand out with the character are we building the character no for last 10 years it has been at the backlog our mentoring process you can blame regulations you can blame short money you can blame budgeting you can blame anything but we haven't done enough and it is on our hands now that if we don't do enough more then we have a lot of problems coming into it for merchant community in future more than this i would like to also say a very small thing about maritime fraternity and their coming together the pilot association brought all the pilots together i'm yet to gather all of them under one umbrella but still because they didn't have a voice half of them were government employees half of them were private employees half of them were major port minor port private port name things in your there unless we bring them all together and mentor them so there is more mentoring required for the senior officers than juniors i think so with this note i would like to put a stop to my talk and happy mentoring to everyone we hope that everybody will come together and create a new india with a whole of a maritime character thank you thank you captain karanjikar uh i would like to now invite captain philip matthew senior vice president seven island shipping to share his thoughts with us captain matthew uh, good evening everybody good evening well, after first of all i thank the maritime union of india for inviting me this evening here and uh, after having listened to all these learned gentlemen before me i hardly have much to say but anyway i will put forward my thoughts it may be a bit pungent but yes uh, it was worth listening i consider that people are our biggest assets and to get maximum efficiency and productivity from them should be the prime goal 
I salute all the seafarers who have gone through this pandemic. They have done a wonderful job. They have not, have, we have hardly had much resistance from them. I also salute the office staff who have worked with the wonderful resilience they have shown with the difficulties. They have been working nearly, I should say, 20 hours on in and out and too much stress on them. I appreciate the DG shipping and the government of India. But having said that, I also see that we have been in, even in this case reactive. If all the efforts which we are taken in the last three weeks would have been anticipated in the month of February and or by March 15th, and we had started action, then the situation would have been much better. There are lessons we learned from this, and I am sure that we will handle situations much better. Today, with the initial two weeks of difficulties, the land transport within India has become quite okay. We are facing some difficulties in some ports. Like even today, I have a ship waiting at Anchorage. They will not let the people go there because the ship is burning in two days. Okay, having said that, what is my feeling of mentoring? I think I sailed for more than 20 years and I have been more than 20 years ashore. The mentoring which was there when I was there was from the top down. down. Of course, there was not much of reverse mentoring at that time, but then there was a personal touch. And that personal touch continued all through my career. When I came ashore, I had the same persons who helped me climb the ladder from a cadet captain at being the junior most person in the office to having become the uh, head of a particular department. Mentoring is sort increases your professionalism, knowledge and skills. I am not one of those persons who believe in big manuals of ISM, read this, read this, this procedure, that procedure. No. Good results can be obtained only through a self virtuating mentoring system that transfers knowledge from one generation to another. This is my opinion. Mentoring is something which is bridging the gap. Mentoring, as I mentioned, it, it, it helps you to grow out in life, think out of the box. What are the barriers? What made us stop to shipboard mentoring? Main, the one of the most important things which happened is our very short manning. Every commercial operator in the shipping business would like to have as short a manning as possible which does not satisfy the operational manning. I have myself raised this issue at no place short than the World Maritime University and at informal discussions at IMO, but nobody is willing to touch this point. If you want good people, they have to practical training in shipping is more important than theoretical training. But let us understand, theoretical training is needed. I'm not discounting that. Then the company must support. Faster promotions, what has it led to? Faster promotions have left Less led to juniors losing faith in the seniors. The seniors' competency is at stake because fast promotions, you can ask people who sailed sometime back when promotions used to take some time. This has made a difference. The onboard culture and leadership managements. Further, what is the problem faced? Today, there is no time. The port stay is very small. The training and mentorship has shifted ashore. It was a wonderful system when the Tolani had conducted in the early 80s under Captain P.S. Barwe. It was wonderfully going on, but somehow along the way, the IMU came in and there has been a problem. Mentoring is a low-cost initiative which helps in the retention of staff. Now, Vasudeva Kutumba, what has this pandemic brought us? The pandemic has brought all of us together. The shipping staff, the office staff, the families of the seafarers, the families of the office people, and everybody together, today we work together, even in your own buildings, if you see, everybody is in a cooperative way. You get your provisions together, you get everything together. This is one of the biggest gains we have got. We have to build upon that. Today's, uh, when we go about reverse mentoring is another topic. Madam Joshi and uh, Mr. Ba Dr. Bhavanani talked about it. It is very important in these times that the generation gaps exist. You have to, there is an, you have to encourage, the, the, encourage the culture of challenging decisions. Today, the, I have found even masters hesitant to exercise their overriding authority when it is essential under commercial pressures. I am not saying for flimsy reasons anybody should ever, it is as per the law where it is permitted. These things we have to inculcate in them. Awareness of MLC and RPSL, it should be in the right 
I have seen RPSL being misused. I have seen. I have put up in my papers to the Maritime Vision 30 MLC not being understood. Now, what is the difference? I am a old time old time sailor, so I believe in classical mentoring. Digital mentoring has its problems. What is that? It is it is good, no doubt. It, there is no alternative, but it is somewhat robotic. It should be not. It should not be just content delivery. The importance must be given to holistic development of the individual. Emotional quotient, spiritual or social quotient is very important. Psych psychological aspects of a student must be taken in addition to the the emotional quotient. Ensure that everything has equity. It should not go only to the privilege. I have seen some of the chats. I can see that. Time is all up, this yeah. is easier done, but when the going gets tough, it is a tough which gets going. Seafarers are expected to face tough decisions at sea. Another last point is mental wellness. today this is a very important issue i have seen various uh, crude accidents taking place which should never have happened i have just brought these points time is showing thank you once again to all of you for having permitted me to few put a few thoughts ahead and also th salute once again to all my seafarers my shore staff everybody connected with the maritime industry great effort thank you thank you captain uh, matthew that is a very spirited uh, talk i now come to the uh, to the last speaker of the day captain sankal shukla general secretary of maps uh, captain shukla please go ahead yeah thank you anil uh, respected uh, chief guest mr joshi uh, our beloved director general of shipping uh, shri amar singh thakur thank you for uh, inviting me as a panelist in this discussion and anil like you said i am the last panelist everybody has spoken before me so there's no point actually making notes and all that you know keeping keeping a speech ready because it it doesn't actually work everybody's already spoken <laughs> yes that was on a lighter note uh, but i very strongly believe that uh, the backbone of a profession that is seafarer is based on mentoring uh, captain tandon spoke about knowledge and competency i think the gap between the two is filled to the mentoring process traditionally seafaring was where a what we called a green horn during that time used to board a ship he used to be mentored and then he became a professional seafarer he went on to take command and things like that it doesn't stop at just being out at sea even coming ashore all of us have had mentors uh people were saying that there are a lot of mentors of theirs in in this group i i second that yes i've got a lot of mentors of mine in in the profession ashore in this group and uh it it is a continuous process the only thing the mentor keeps changing from a situation to situation it was brought up again in the previous discussion that you have a mentor while you're in school you have a mentor when you're in your professional college then while at work you have a mentor so the mentor just keeps changing but the mentoring continues and now we talk about reverse mentoring or cross mentoring that is a new concept that has started let us take today's situation the covid 19 situation uh, i've been seeing the chats there's a lot of frustration our seafarers are not coming back we all know and a lot of a lot of us are in this panel that when this lockdown started when the countries not only india countries globally started closing uh doors not letting people enter we really didn't know what to do we as individual companies we as individual associations uh started approaching the director general of shipping and the director general of shipping obviously cannot respond to every individual request so he acted as a mentor over there he brought us all together and he said let us work as one group so i do not see a better example to give when we started off this entire process of making the standard operating protocols uh, for sign off of uh, or sign on and sign off of indian crew members in indian ports we all had worked together we all worked together different companies different associations but all of us worked together to build on the sops and work with the director general of shipping from there we progressed to a situation where now we are looking at i mean there have been a lot of charter flights that have gone out uh, there are charter flights that have come in with the cruise uh, seafarers come come back to the country 
and we are shortly going to be in a scenario where we are going to have um, uh, Indian seafarers on normal cargo ships also returning via, via charter flights uh, to the country. This would not have been possible if we were not mentored into working together, working together as an industry, not as individuals. Today, we all are pooling in all our resources together to make sure that our beloved seafarers come back uh, after they are relieved. And it's happening. We are talking more to each other. Uh, in fact, uh, I've seen most of our faces on a daily basis. The only thing today, the clothes are slightly different. Otherwise, we are sitting in our t-shirts. Uh, but we are doing it, it. And it's all being done because we were mentored to do so. The situation today, um, again, like uh, Captain Philip said, that the same amount of mentoring is not taking place on board the ship. And one of the valid points that he touched upon was that the, 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 the seniors on board the ship feel that they are not supposed to be mentors because the responsibility has shifted ashore. The responsibility of mentoring a seafarer on board the ship cannot shift ashore. You cannot think that you bring a seafarer into a classroom and you will be able to mentor him. In classroom, you give knowledge. Mentoring takes place on board the ship. And that is what we need to understand. That is what we need to accept. And that is what we need to uh, uh, facilitate our senior officers to do. So I'm not going to take much time because uh, uh, a lot of the other points are already covered. Um, again, a big thank you to all the seafarers on board the ship. Uh, the global trade continued because they understood uh, the, 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 they understood the situation. They understood the situation that they were in. And despite what people may say, despite what social media may say, I, may, I, I can still tell you that majority of our seafarers are still understanding. They are not raising their voice. They understand what the situation is. I also thank the families of the seafarers ashore for their understanding. There have been calamities that have taken place at some people's houses. Uh, we had... Um, cyclones coming in in various places but the families have understood that their loved ones will be bought back whenever it is safe to be bought back that's it Anil. thank you from my side thank you uh, uh, that was precise and to the point so we've come to the end of the panel that was invited today to share uh, their thoughts with us and um, uh, while all of this was going on we have a team that has been working behind the scenes, uh, the backend team furiously uh, noting all the comments that are being made. And we are going to try and uh, take just about one or two questions uh, because we're completely out of time, uh, but related to uh, mentor. And uh, one question has come to you to Captain Jha. Captain Jha, are you here? Yeah. So uh, Captain Jha, there is a question uh, for you that you made a mention about a mentee's willingness uh, to be mentored. And uh, somebody has asked, so what can the seniors on board do to, to encourage this? And what, what are the steps that a senior uh, is expected to take at this stage? Yeah, that's absolutely right. The first step has to be walked by the senior, then only junior will walk two more steps. This is very clear. But the question is not that. Question is, mentee is willing to accept that senior as a mentor or not? If he's uh, like uh, somebody said that uh, uh, senior officers are getting promotion very quickly, so they are uh, idealism is not there in that senior. So they need to see that he is the ideal person. He is the role model of the. Uh, uh, he's, he's a role model of everybody. So he accepts that. Now today you see any scenario you see, anywhere you see, can you tell me any role, role model? You had a Mahatma Gandhi, you had Netaji Bose, you had so many leaders were there whom you can say they idealize it. But today do you have anybody, whether it is a political or education or any, any, anywhere else? Yes, partly you have. You have something you have as Sankalp says that, yes, I have. Philip, Captain Philip Matthew says, yes, I have. Partly you have. So we need to educate 
even the seniors, not only the junior, how to do the mentoring. And it was said very nicely by the Captain Tanna, 10 minutes mentoring. That book must be read by everybody, especially by all seniors to uh, become a real mentor so that whatever you do, generation has to take over from you. You are old. So generation has to take over whether right or wrong. If you give a right, maybe probably 1.3 billion population will have a lot of job. If you do not mentor properly, all of us will lose. So I hope I'm clear. And if not, if something more is needed, he can give me a call, concerned person. I will explain him further. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Captain Ja. Uh, we have one question for the DG, but I note that the DG is not here. So I'm going to uh, request uh, Abdul Ghani ji to, uh, to reply to this. A question has been asked is that the DG is definitely applauded because of their efforts to help the industry in respect of the crew change. But can the DG's office assist by telling all ports and various states to try and follow one single SOP or rule for crew change? These differing crew change rules causes a lot of anxiety to uh, seafarers. Uh, you have a view on this, uh, Abdulji? Yeah, there is a central notification from the Ministry of Home Affairs that it has, which has to be followed centrally. But the state governments in their own wisdom, in their own mandates, they take different interpretation and that is creating a problem. The state of West Bengal, Goa, Tamil Nadu, some of, and the Maharashtra has been the best example of having a good facilitation. The DG shipping office and the DG personally is taking it up with the highest level at the state level in the state with the chief secretary that they should follow similarly, or at least they should, you know, uh, uh, make it easy for the seafarers to sign up. The DG has been doing it, but there are challenges. There are challenges to this and it is being worked. And we, the, the maritime administration office is very supportive and if they will take it at a personal level with the people who matter in that particular state. But it is still not, there is needs to be more improvement, I would say. Okay, thank you uh, very much. I think um, uh, I, with that, I hope some of the questions have been um, uh, answered. We have unfortunately do not have any more time for any more uh, uh, questions. I have been asked to uh, summarize uh, the various thoughts uh, that were made today. And from my notes, I think it was uh, it was wonderful to listen to these varying ideas. Uh, Captain Rajesh Nandan spoke and started the day with talking about the linear hierarchy that exists on the ship. But he made an important point about bridging the gap between knowledge and competency. And as this went on, I think a lot of our seniors spoke about this need that mentoring should help you bridge the gap between knowledge and competency. Uh, Mr. V.K. Jain spoke about how a uh, mentor needs to be a consultant, he needs to be a counselor, a cheerleader. And I think he touched upon very important thing. He said Sri Krishna was the first greatest mentor. And yes, it, I think that was a wonderful point. Um, you know, uh, he was the one who mentored Arjun when uh, Arjun faced some kind of a dilemma. He referred to the mentorship program that the IMEI is running in Goa. I personally also know about it, and I think it works very well. We have to be thankful for Captain uh, Jha, who set the tone of uh, sticking to time, and he spoke about his experiences in SCI. We heard him again about what the seniors need to do, and he also touched upon why people are today worried, the whole uh, sense of wanting followers rather than creating leaders. Uh, we had Sharvani from the IWSF who spoke about the need for social mentoring. And I think she more than twice made this very important point and recommended in not so many, in very clear words, the need to have formalized social mentoring for men. And I think all of us men who are here very clearly understand the message that she has tried to give on behalf of the ladies and the lady seafarers who come on board the ships. Uh, she spoke about shipping being a hazardous uh, profession, and I can indeed imagine. Uh, Mr. Abdul Ghani Sarang to use this opportunity to, to try and assuage the concerns of various people I see on this uh, group 
who have had concerns about bringing their uh, loved ones back and uh, he has uh, tried to explain to everybody the need to show patience we know it is easy to say this from a distance but believe me uh, there has been nobody less than mr abdul ghani serang who has made huge efforts to try and assist to bring them back uh, you heard uh, sanjay bhavnani you heard um, uh, captain halbe was not there today captain matthew sankal shukla all of these people have been working very very hard to try and get the seafarers in and get them out also not just get them in so to protect our jobs they have been working very hard to get people back uh, dr bhavnani spoke about the need for collaboration and the need to pass the baton but in order to enhance uh, passing the baton not simply just passing the baton on we had a young uh, pankudi uh, poddar who spoke about the need for positivity and uh, how opportunities need to be provided to seafarers when they come back ashore uh, uh, captain karanjikar of course uh, spoke upon another important issue that he said that it is the family and the family tradition and that our mentoring begins at home you know our parents our grandparents our uncle auntie everybody tells us our neighbors tell us how we should be behaving what kind of people we ought to be when we grow up captain philip matthew made some very spirited points having sailed for 20 years he said he was a beneficiary of you know being touched by mentoring all from the time when he was a cadet captain to being coming an hod he said that there is a he also touched upon this need and i think this is a very important take away i am taking away from today's meeting is the fact about bridging the gap the need for transfer of knowledge the fact that short manning leads to pressure on people very few people have had the courage to raise this i represent ship owners and i i applaud his ability to be able to he works for a ship owner and this shows the quality of the person that they have, people are willing to take up issues not just for from, from a personal gain point but from the larger perspective of the seafarers he also touched on the issue of mental wellness and i saw this discussion all throughout in the chat room also uh, captain sankal shukla as i said he has been at the forefront in trying to uh, you know work with the dg i have seen him in action in that uh, group uh, that the dg runs and believe me these people are all putting in those of you who self seafarers families are here these people are putting in huge amount of effort to get your family back and to send those who need to be employed back rest assured nobody is <clears throat> sleeping easy and everybody is at the at the job things take time and we are grateful and on behalf of the ship owners i will also say we are grateful for the patience shown by all of you i think uh, with this uh, it is now my uh, my pleasure to ask ms saleha uh, who is the head of the mui women's wing to propose a vote of thanks to all of the people who have spent time uh, contributed their minds and their thought and over to you uh, saleha thank you sir thank you mr devi uh and as we come to the end of our program i would like to give my vote of thanks uh honorable chief guest mr amitabh kumar respected madam joshi mr amar singh thakur all our exemplary speakers and webinar guests before i proceed with the vote of thanks i seize this opportunity to mention that i'm very fortunate to be working with mr amar singh thakur who is a mentor of mentors I say this because I see him mentor seafarers every single day in office. With a person as modest as him, he will never share these stories because he firmly believes that we don't talk about our work, rather our work speaks for itself. And we at the MUI are proud of this fact. So taking this subject further, I'm extremely pleased to share that the MUI launches a mentoring and coaching program custom made specially for the seafarer community. On behalf of the Maritime Union of India, and vasudeva kutumbakam in other words one family that we call our maritime fraternity i would like to thank our chief guest for today's session shri amitabh kumar ji uh, director general of shipping for his for inspiring us towards a new initiate initiative for the maritime industry i would also like to acknowledge our gratitude to madam hk joshi chairman and managing director of the shipping corporation of india for her very inspiring message I extend a very heart hearty vote of thanks to all our speakers today for sharing with us their mentoring strategies 
and giving us insights on how to proceed collectively with this subject further. I would like to express a sincere thanks to organizations that supported us today, namely INSA, FOSMA, MASA, NUSI, CMMI, IMEI, IWSF, Vista India, AAIMPA, and MAPS India. A big thank you to our media partners, Bandarkar Publications and Marix Media. I would like to take this opportunity to place on record a hearty thanks to Bandarkar Publications and HIMT for their guidance and technical support that they have extended to all of us today. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues at the MUI. I thank each one of them, especially my core team members at the Women's Wing, Pauru Chishti Ukaji, Ilham Barmal, and Lata Khatri. Finally, a big thank you to all our members in the audience today, especially our seafarers and their families who have stood with the MUI as Vasudeva Kutumbakam, one large family at all times. May I just announce that the Maritime Trainers Guild has organized a two days course on training the e-trainer on 6th and 7th June. The details can be found on their website. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think uh, with the with this, I think we come to the end of uh, proceedings. And with the permission of uh, Thakur Saab and Saleha and all of you, thank you once again. It was a pleasure listening to all of you. And uh, stay safe. And we'll catch up soon. Have a good day. Great, so thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Mr. David. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all the participants for tolerating my interference. I said that <laughs> at the beginning and once again. It was good. It was good. We have done a good time. Thank you, Devli, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also. Thank you all. Thank you, Thakur, sir. Well conducted, well organized, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.